All right, we got ourselves some deadlock patch note changes here starting today. Uh, the big thing right off the bat is that they're going to be adding ranked to the game. And ranked is going to be split up. It's going to be a little bit strange. Got to have at least 50 games played in order to enter into the game mode. And then it's going to be open up at different times of the day, 1 to 4 p.m. and 7 to 10 p.m. in your respective time zone. Um, so you get to choose the time zone. Like if you're an NA, you get to choose between east and west, and then that will you know reflect upon your actual time where you are at. Um, and then these are going to be basically week-long rank adventures where you'll get a rank after a full week. Uh, and the first rank queue opens up on October 15th. So this will be interesting. So it'll be a little bit more uh, competitive matches, and it'll only be for a limited time during the day. So that will be interesting. They added a third casting mode, Quick Cast, which is if you're familiar with Smite, that right there is exactly what they've been doing for a long time. So now they've basically got normal, quick, and instant cast in the game. Um, they've done a bunch of bug fixes, which is fine. They did a bunch of things like localization. They did a bunch of all that good stuff. These are just all various bug fixes and audio run-throughs and all that good stuff. And then we get into the actual miscellaneous gameplay stuff. And these have had some pretty big effects on the game. We only played a couple of uh, games this morning with these changes, but it's already had some big effects. Troopers attack versus the lane minion uh, versus lane guardians is a little bit lower now, so they get closer to it. Players also have to be closer to attack the lane guardian. The guardians take less damage from troopers, so they're a little bit easier to kill. And this is the important one. Guardian damage versus players increased by 20%. I have seen quite a few players die trying to dive under the Guardians early. And they actually do damage now. The jungle was reworked a little bit, so medium camps spawn at 5 minutes instead of 7. Hard camps spawn at 8. Teleporters are now useful at the 8-minute marker instead of 10. Trooper spawn bounty lane time change from 10 minutes to 8 minutes. So um, this means that you see a lot more rotating early now because you're no longer getting the full XP in those duo lanes. So you start to see a lot more rotations around the 8-minute marker instead of 10-minute marker. Uh, those are all big deals. This is a big deal. Golden Statues breakables have been changed to where now they spot the 2-minute marker instead of 3. And also, they've got way better stuff in it now. So they have a Tier 3 upgrade at the 25-minute marker. And in general, they're just giving out better drops. Mid-boss is kind of doing the same thing. Where there's going to be three tiers to it now. So instead of the buff being 70%, it's 50, 70, 90 for consecutive deaths of the mid-boss. Uh, Reju, respawn thing is doing the same thing. Instead of just 50, it's 40, 50, 60. AKA, if you get the third mid-boss, it's real strong. Real strong with that third mid-boss. But the first one isn't quite as big of a deal anymore. So, you know, it's, it's actually a nice middle ground. I prefer it in this kind of scaling way. Earn bounty has been increased by 15%. Uh, so if you weren't fighting over the urn, you should be now. The urn is like a true... Uh, a true objective that you should be playing with your team. It does give a lot of souls. Uh, so that earn is a very big deal. They changed the comeback formula. So it's more important now to be killing the strongest hero. So before it was a little bit more weighted to where if you were on the ahead team, but now it's more about killing the actual fed hero on the enemy team. That is very important. All heroes movement speed was increased by a little bit. And then Enduring Speed was reduced to reflect heroes having a bigger movement speed. Uh, bullet and Spirit Life Steal now stack diminishingly. This was a crazy patch. This patch is cooking. Uh, they changed the teleport locations a little bit. Um, they've also changed how they work. So there's a little map here where you can see where they teleport to. And those teleporters also give you a small amount of movement speed after you teleport through them. So these are all the new teleport locations. They did some stuff on the map where they like widened some staircases and stuff. And they changed some um, of the underground stuff to be above and above stuff to be underground. Uh, they moved the guardians slightly back and you can see that kind of stuff. Now this is where we're just going to read through all of these changes. And then we'll go kind of over the section. So for weapon items, 
Monster rounds. They reduced the damage on NPCs by 5%. Restorative shot gives you 1% less weapon damage. Basic magazine gives you 2% more ammo. Melee charge cooldown from 10.5 to 16 seconds. Long range ammo increased by 5%. Tesla bullets increase the scaling from 0.13 to 0.16. Alchemical file now behaves like other grenades. The base damage decrease also increased from 45 to 55. Toxic bullet buildup is now slower. Pretty big nerf to toxic bullets right there. Frenzy low HP threshold increased from 40 to 50%. Ricochet reduced the total ricochet range from 14 to 11. Spirit power on silencer increased from 12 to 18. Vampiric burst added ammo from 50 to 75 percent and the cooldown has been reduced spiritual overflow no longer gives fire rate but it does upon full build up grant 35 percent fire rate and activated spirit power increase from 45 to 50. so pretty decent changes within there i'd say one of the bigger ones is the toxic bullets building up 15 percent slower is actually a big deal and also some other changes like the ricochet isn't quite as oppressive in the PvP fights, but it's still really strong. Uh, it's still like a primary PvE farm your brains out item, so no worries there. Vitality items. Healing right duration has been increased, but the heal remains the same, so it got nerfed. Extra regen has a little bit more regen on it. Extra regen has a little bit more ammo on it. Stamina. Extra stamina increased the stamina recovery 14 to 16%. Fire rate reduced, though, from 7 to 6%, but it gives 25 health now, and the weapon damage was increased on extra health. Enduring speed has got a little bit of a movement, movement reduced because they increased everybody's movement speed by 0.3. They also reduced the bullet slow resist on it. Restorative locket got itself a little bit of a buff there. Return fire cooldown increase from 25 to 30 seconds, a little bit of a nerf. They also... Uh, reduce the bullet resist from 25 to 20%. Health Nova Spirit Power increased though from 4 to 6, and Combat Barrier Weapon Damage reduced from 25 to 22%. Fortitude got itself a little bit of a buff, 325 health. Life Streak Health increased from 55% of melee to 65%. Veil Walker got a small little buff. Superior Stamina, just like the smaller version, a little buff. Majestic Leap has a slightly longer cooldown. The Rescue Beam has a slightly less cast range, and Leech got weapon damage increased, as well as a spirit power increase, and Siphon Bullets got an HP steal per bullet increase. Nothing super crazy in here. Um, that Leech change is pretty nice there at the bottom, but nothing in here super crazy. A lot of, you know, a lot of the changes in Deadlock regarding the balancing are basically like plus 3%, minus 3%, that kind of stuff. So a lot of these changes on individual items aren't that big of a deal, but it's more about conglomerate builds. So if you built three different items a lot that all got buffed, that's going to be decently substantial. And if you built three items often that all got nerfed, that is also going to be decently substantial. Spirit items. Going through the same thing, spirit power 9 to 10 on extra spirit. Ammo scavenger reduced the uh, spirit power you get from the souls 2 to 1, but increased the maximum stacks on ammo scavenger. Uh, withering whip no longer gives you health. It gives you a bullet shield instead, and they reduce the cooldown. Cold front cooldown has been reduced. Mystic vulnerability fixed it stacking with escalating exposure. That is hilarious. That's an important bug fix. Slowing hex got a slight nerf. Slow remove. That's a very strong active. You should be buying that more often. Then they improved the spirit power on improved spirit. Improved burst got a nerf, though. Max health damage reduced from 9 to 7. So sorry to Gray Talon. You got nerfed. Knockdown, cooldown, reduced, so you can get Great Talon out of the air more. Poor guy. Ethereal Shift can no longer end it early. That's a big gameplay right there. That's a big one. You got to sit it out the whole thing. Got to be very careful about using it now. Superior cooldown gives you a spirit shield. Escalating exposure. Spirit resist on damage reduced. Escalating exposure and per stack got reduced. And duration of it reduces. Refresher cooldown increase from 212 to 230 because <laughs> screw Yamato's for forever and Mystic Reverb slow reduce from 50 to 40 percent. Couple of decent changes in there. Refresher has almost a full 20 seconds extra on the cooldown. Escalating exposure got a nerf and it won't stack with itself. Uh, that would be problematic for sure. So that's a good bug fix. And then Ethereal Shift not being able to end early means you have to be careful about actually hitting that ethereal shift or you're going to be stuck in it for a long time 
for a long time. Then we go into the actual hero changes. Abrams got a small nerf. He got some HP reductions, uh, but they also gave him some bug fixes to help him kind of move around with this charge. Bebop, his bomb growth got increased 2.5 to 4% per stack, but now he loses two health on death for the sticky bomb and has a max of 15 stacks. Hook got increased in the range, but now it hits enemy troopers. So enemy troopers can body block it. The hook no longer goes around corners. And then hyper beam uh, got the movement slowed reduction on it, but it no longer scales with spirit power. So some pros and some cons here for Bebop for sure. Uh, he's getting a little bit of love and a little bit of hit and a little bit of love and a little bit of hit. Dynamo quantum entanglement cooldown increased from 12.5 to 15. Quantum entanglement T3 now also reduces the cooldowns though by four seconds. This is actually kind of a theme uh, within this, a lot of that kind of thing. Slightly longer cooldown, but then when you rank it up, it gets a little bit lower. Uh, fixed kinetic pulse, T2 tooltip to clarify that affects bullets only, not melee. Poor, poor gray talent. Arrow cycle time increased from 0.45 to 0.45, but the DPS is unchanged. A lot of these are bug fixes within this, but fire rate no longer scales with spirit power, uh, but his base bullet damage now gets a little bit off of spirit power. Uh, the movement speed no longer scales with spirit power, but he gets an extra stamina. So they tried to, like, they kind of did the same thing with Bebop. Some hits and some love, some hits and some love. Uh, I think Grey Talon probably needs more love than hits. Haze is a weird one. Fixation max stacks <laughs> from 30 to 40. And Fixation tier 3, though, reduced from 0.2 to 0.15. Bullet Dance no longer gives fire rate. Base ability only has the two targets hit per shot. No longer grants evasion, but the tier 3 gives 40% evasion and plus 2 bullet dance speed. Uh, AKA Hayes late game is still crazy. In fact, Hayes late game might even be crazier. <laughs> so, you know, keep her, keep her down and out and don't let her get to full build. In furnace catalyst damage amp has been reduced, but then the tier three amp increase. So one other one of those like little nerf in the early, but then they kind of even it out in the late when you get it buffed up. Ivy getting some mostly bug fixes right here. Lady Gaius also getting some bug fixes. She can now life drain on allied heroes. I don't know if that can kill allied heroes, but that's going to be hilariously troll. Uh, they also nerfed the slow duration on Malice, and they also uh, reduced the Malice amp duration. Lash got base bullet damage reduced. His flag heal has been reduced versus heroes and creeps. Just had a lot of sustain. McGinnis got a lot of changes in this patch. Uh... To her turrets specifically, most of her other stuff is fairly similar, but her turrets basically got uh, <laughs> cooldowns reduced so you can use them more often. In general, they're a little bit easier to kill, and in general, they had some bug fixes like Ricochet not bouncing off of them, which was a problem. Uh, but her turrets do a lot of damage, and they're a little bit easier to kill is basically the chest. Mirage's Tornado. Uh, now uses range for travel distance instead of duration, so now it can actually scale with some items and stuff. Uh, Mirage got the base damage reduced on Dijin's Mark, uh, as well as power scaling increase on it. He's about the same, though. He got a little bit of changes as well to the Traveler, uh, shifting around on the upgrades for his ultimate. Mo and Krill. You can see another one of these. Tier 1 now grants 30% bullet resist while channeling. No longer the minus cooldown. And then the combo had its cooldown reduced outright. So a little bit of love there for Mo and Krill. Paradox. Bullet growth boon increased to 0.45. The wall bullet duration, though, was reduced. Fix the time while not spotting when looking down while casting, which is funny. Uh, swap cooldown increased to 65 seconds. Swap range has been reduced. Uh... The Pulse Grenade damage amp stack, though, went up, but now the, the Tier 3 no longer increases the damage amp. So you can see a lot of these changes where, like, they gave a small buff and then took away an upgrade, or they gave a small nerf and then put a slightly bigger upgrade on people. Pocket did get a nerf, though. His shotgun falls off a lot faster now, which is nice. His satchel has to respect line of sight to do the damage as well, which is a big deal. The barrage radius was reduced, so you have to actually aim it a little bit closer. So some pretty large nerfs there to pocket. Seven got his base regen increase from 1.5 to 3. Movement speed scaling with spirit power has been reduced, and the lightning ball tier 3 has been increased from 1 meter to 2 meter. 
Shiv, the slice and dice spirit damage increased from 1.2 to 1.3. Uh, he's got the decay rate now a little bit uh, reduced, which is nice. We can keep that on a little bit longer. And then the buffer duration increased from 7 to 12 seconds, which is how long it stays before starting to decay. Couple more characters. Oh, yeah. We finished up the deadlock patch notes. Vindicta reverted the fall off damage changes that she had in the previous one. So she's a little bit stronger without the bullet drop off being quite as bad. Uh, the flight duration no longer scales with spirit power, but the T2 now increases flight duration by six seconds. Bonus speed scales at 50% effectiveness for her flight bonus. She no longer gets the bullet resist on her gun cycle time. Has been changed from 0.22 to 0.26, with DPS scaling remains the same. That's a pretty common theme. Her stake duration got reduced by a quarter of a second. This is the big one for Vindicta. Assassinate bonus souls are now unsecured. So when she gets those bonus souls with her snipe, she actually has to go spend them, or you can kill her and take them from her, which is a big deal. That is a big deal. Crow, crow uh, percent of damage no longer affects mid-boss. No longer <laughs> get to abuse that. Viscous Goo Ball doesn't trigger on hit effects while in Ethereal Shift, as it shouldn't. Uh, the Goo Ball stun duration got reduced by 0.3 seconds. The Splatter damage got reduced by 10. Uh, splatter Spirit Resist scaling got increased, though, and apparently Instacast was not working on Puddle Punch. Warden got the Flask cooldown from 14 to 12. Flask damage got increased, so some pretty nice buffs there for Warden. Flask Tier 1 is now the stamina reduction. Tier 2 is the damage. That's huge. For Warden, very annoying. Last stand channel duration reduced from 2.2 to 2 seconds in the range increase. Massive Warden buffs. I mean, that's a that that's that's the biggest winner of the patch is Warden for sure. And then Wraith, card trick, spirit scaling reduced, and card trick generation via melee reduced. And then Yamato coming in with a nerf. Power slash increased cooldown from 8.5 to 10.5. The slash T2, though, reduces the cooldown by 2 seconds. Shadow Transformation no longer gives bullet and spirit resist, and the transformation was reduced from 4.5 to 4 seconds. So Yamato got a, got a decent slap. Warden is the big winner of the patch. Pocket got a decent slap. Paradox got a little bit of a slap as well. McGinnis turrets are somehow even more annoying than they were. Hayes late game is somehow even stronger than it was. Gray Talon is still Gray Talon, poor guy. And Beep Bop can hopefully not pull you behind walls when you had no reason to get pulled. And that is our Deadlock patch notes. How about that? Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.